What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here back on this Monday. Can't believe it's Monday already. January 23rd, 2023. It's about 12, 13 uh, p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And the latest quake shows a 1.5 over here around the Southern California area. All right, let's go ahead and jump into earthquake activity here across the West Coast where we're still watching a, a little swarm of activity. Um, position right over the Bay Area or just south here. Uh, a new little swarm has popped up on the southern end of the Calaveras Fault Zone uh, earlier this morning with a uh, 3.6 and some other smaller quakes in there as well. Now this region here of the Bay Area has been uh, fairly uh, active over the past few days uh, with a couple different swarms uh, around the San Andreas Fault here on the uh, peninsula section where uh, looks, let's see if we got any activity overnight here specifically in this region. Looks like the last one was yesterday, uh, early evening time frame. but over the past week, we've seen uh, quite a handful of earthquakes within this area of the San Francisco Bay on the San Andreas Fault, and now a little new swarm uh, inland, a little bit further south. But overall, keeping an eye on this specific area of California here for some uh, potential movement. The creeping segment here of the San Andreas Fault, very quiet. Uh, and the rest of California, this is very odd. Sierra Nevada, not a whole lot popping off up here at all. Uh, nothing through Ridgecrest area or Long Valley Super Volcano. Uh, it's almost like this entire area here, this chunk of land is just quiet as can be. Um, now, I don't know if they're having some type of... Uh, technical errors or what as far as the reporting goes but uh, there's not a whole lot showing up there it's been a while since i've seen it look like that uh, in southern california fairly quiet as well yes there's a couple small earthquakes within the last hour around corona and also down along the san jacinto fault zone uh, further south but uh that's about it there's only a handful of quakes down here and that's very uh definitely not normal uh, in terms of average seismic activity on, on any given day so for now, I mean, it's pretty much obvious where this activity is kind of uh, pointing towards with this swarming area around the bay. So we'll watch that uh, throughout the day today. Over around the Salt Lake City, Utah area, a couple small earthquakes this morning and uh, some late last night. All below, well, we got one at 1.0, but these are very small quakes. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, it looks like they have included a couple earthquakes here from yesterday and overnight. So let's see what we have for the Yellowstone thumbnails, which is an overview of activity occurring uh, at the park. And it looks as though, kind of looks like we're seeing a couple small earthquakes here around the Maple Creek area. There's one, and uh, as you can see, a couple other spikes listed up here on this graph, indicating some very small, uh, the train, the train, it never fails. It always comes around when I do my update not even joking uh, so a couple little earthquakes here overnight and um, that's uh that's about it no major activity pushing through the uh wyoming area currently the rest of the country pretty quiet as well a couple spotty earthquakes around the okc area just north of there in oklahoma uh, caribbean plate i uh, got some activity further off the coast here of el salvador and um guatemala now these earthquakes here from yesterday uh, one of those quakes down into the middle America Trench, somewhat deep. Around the Puerto Rico area, I've been watching a swarm of movement uh, out here over the last week. It looks like it's still kind of continuing here today. Uh, and late last night, the last one uh, looks like a 3.2 just north here of the Virgin Islands area. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that and see how this plays out. It's been quite active up here north uh, of Puerto Rico following the... Uh, that earthquake that struck here a few days back that uh, 6.2 I believe 6.2 there it is all right let's see what else we got here around the region South America is showing uh, not a whole lot of activity there on the globe or on the uh, map on the globe there's some smaller earthquakes it looks like uh, some of those from last night it looks like we may have a recent earthquake there uh, in the small very small microquake range some twos and threes along the South America region today. Uh, over here, this uh, still pretty active. 
We did see some activity ramp up last night with a 5.1 right in our seismically, uh, I don't want to say dead zone, but uh, it's kind of where activity has completely been absent here for the last week up around the Nepal area through the Myanmar region and about the northern end of the Java Trench is where it's uh, come to a halt. But uh, over the last 24, 48 hours, we've seen that activity halt here right around the Indonesia region uh, back prior to the southern end of the Java Trench with a lot of buildup further east and down south here along the New Zealand region. But it looks as though we got uh, a little activity here this morning. India, now 5.1 expecting something much bigger than that for this area uh, due to the amount of or due to due to the lack of activity here uh, over the past week so we'll continue to watch this area i don't think we're done yet uh, in terms of uh, seeing some further movement these are just a little hints um, within this little quiet zone that we've been watching uh, for some possibly larger activity we'll continue to monitor that uh, what is happening out here south of the philippines seeing some further activity uh, this morning into the well north of the Maluka Sea area just around the region of the uh, southern end of the Philippine Trench still seeing a swarm of activity here mostly fours and fives now this is the area that did see that uh, large earthquake here has it been over a week ago nope 7.0 that struck now it's it's very common to see quite a few fours and fives and maybe even some sixes as far as aftershock activity goes but um, that's just a lot. It seems like a lot going on there in this area. Um, again, sometimes these swarms and earthquake sequences can turn into something bigger. So we'll watch this area. I know this region can see some eight pointers. Uh, so who knows? Could be four shocks, maybe just after shocks that are uh, pretty hefty following this 7.0 that struck here a few days ago. Uh, 4.7 southern end of the Philippine Trench. Uh, from yesterday it looks like and uh, a little bit of typical movement it looks like here that we've seen yesterday or last night during the update kicking off near Papua New Guinea now let me see what we got for smaller quakes there's a couple there's actually a handful of earthquakes here listed around the Java Trench some fours uh, that are not showing up here it's going to be specifically specifically in this area uh, that the USGS is not reporting darn it it's a Monday so maybe they're busy but either way, this activity here, you know, it, it gives us an indication of what's going on, where the pressure is currently at, where the earthquake activity is happening, and potentially uh, what could be next. Again, right about, oh, right about here in this little line area is where the activity has pretty much come to a halt over the last week with earthquakes backfilling over here and over around the uh, Middle East, mi Middle East areas, and then west over here around the Mediterranean, uh, leaving this area in a huge gap of lack of seismic activity. But again, this 5.1 could be just a little knock on the door to um, seeing this area fill in with some quakes here rather soon. Now, there's a, f a quite a few fours, and I think I even seen that five in there, right? In this aftershock activity, yes, the USGS is reporting that activity, which is good, but not so much for the activity around Java Trench. So either way, we can fill this in slightly uh, with those earthquakes being reported by the EMSC for that region. Now down south here around Fiji, Tonga Trench area, looks like the last earthquake here, getting some deeper movement. I did mention to watch for that, right? I uh, did mention for some uh, backfilling and some return to return uh, to some of the deeper activity around Fiji. And that happened, it looks like, about 2 in the morning, 565 kilometers for that 4.6. And I uh, also seen a 4.9 over here around the southeast Loyalty Islands area. Uh, North Island, New Zealand. This earthquake came in yesterday afternoon. Now, this is a deep one into the Hikurangi sub Hikurangi subduction zone, 209 kilometers for 4.3. Uh, I don't know if they've had anything else overnight. Looks like they had a, a little bit of shallower earthquake activity with that 3.0 uh, showing up. Not a not a big earthquake, but uh, looks like a little bit of adjustment there at the surface levels following that deep earthquake from yesterday. It's 15 kilometers deep for that 3.0 earthquake.
the deeper one uh we've seen that deeper one strike over here a little bit but uh, either way definitely seen a little bit of activity here over the last uh, uh 24 hours now the geonet servers here 2.6 about three hours ago i know a lot of people I actually had a couple comments last night. This just goes to show you, I read all the comments here. A lot of folks don't want to be reported on the small quakes. They just want 4.9 and above or 5.0 and above. Well, uh, the thing with that is if you ignore all the smaller earthquakes, like for example, you know, the, the movement around the Bay Area, these are all small quakes, right? And, but they're in a swarm fashion and a swarm uh, of that magnitude, of any magnitude, I should say, uh, could be a key indicator of potentially larger earthquakes. So to wipe all of this out, you know, say if you just do 2.5 and above, and there was actually a 3.6 there, about 6 in the morning, that's in that little swarm area. But to exclude all of these smaller quakes and look at the map and say, yeah, things are, things are pretty quiet here around the Bay Area, would just be foolish. It'd be really foolish to ignore the smaller quakes. So I cannot stop reporting on... Um, all magnitudes of quakes here that's what i've always done on this channel and will continue to do so because swarms tend to lead to potentially larger uh, subsequent earthquake activity not only potentially in the region of the swarm but possibly nearby along a plate boundary so again all magnitudes are important so that's why i continue to report on all magnitudes just figured i would throw that out there uh, because, you know, I read all your comments. Yes, I do. may not respond to everyone, but just know I do. And I appreciate some of the good ones out there and even the bad ones, right? Everyone's entitled to speak their uh, voice out here. And so, so do I. So that's what I have to say about it. Okay, um, Volcano Drums here real quick around New Zealand. There is that four-pointer from yesterday, the deeper one. Now, looking at earthquake activity across... Um, these volcanic drums doesn't show a whole lot no major swarming at uh, any of these volcanoes uh, currently and the taupo super volcano is currently sleeping not a whole lot going on there with uh, earthquake activity all right uh, see what else we got the big island of hawaii not a whole lot things are um you know we're watching this little swarm of activity kicking off here around lohi seamount in a migrational fashion i mean that tells me right there something's on the move but uh looks like things have kind of mellowed out here slightly there's still some twos and ones out here in the mix of this earthquake activity but um nothing within the last hour so we'll continue to watch it and see how that plays out up into alaska region um nothing in the last hour in fact things look like they're calming down up there as well about 28 earthquakes right of all magnitudes no nothing major if you go to 2.5 and above we got one up around denali uh, which is going to be a 3.0 and then a couple smaller quakes down here along the subduction zone but you know a lot of times if we see subduction zone earthquakes here uh, in a swarm fashion say even under 2.5 uh, that could be a good key indicator of some some high stress building up along that subduction zone level and potentially a larger quake popping off so that's why we cover all magnitudes and i really wish i really really wish that uh usgs would put up a lot of the uh smaller magnitudes across uh, their map but that's why that's kind of why we use uh, a couple different agencies here on the earthquake 3d globe uh, we use the usgs of course and then um, geonet servers which monitor uh, earthquake activity around new zealand australia area uh, but also i've seen them pop up um, international earthquake activity recently so uh, I don't know if that's a new thing or or they're just testing something out. Uh, and then also um, we do have the geo or the uh, EMSC, uh, which is a Euro European model which monitors uh, worldwide activity. Sometimes you'll see a six or seven pointer up here on the globe, uh, and it came from the EMSC. Nothing from the USGS yet. The EMSC does tend to get their earthquakes out first as a preliminary earthquake report. Uh, and then it could either get upgraded, downgraded, or even possibly deleted. But uh, the thing is, EMSC is really quick at uh, getting these updates out onto the globe. So that's kind of why I utilize those. Uh, use, use that agency as well in here. Plus, they report activity around the Mediterranean in the smaller quake. Look what we just did. 
You guys see that? We just spoke that 2.7 into existence. <laughs> oh goodness, it's gonna. Maybe I will play the lottery. Maybe I will. I, I read that comment too. All right, uh, let's see what else we have across the area. We did have um, yeah, we had that 5.1 out here in the Mediterranean this morning. And some smaller quakes regionally, including that 2.7 that just popped up. Atlantic Ocean, calm and clear. South Sandwich Islands did see a 5.1 yesterday, but uh, a return to quiet activity. Uh, Maine up here has been shaking a little bit, 1.4 from yesterday. Now, the last seven days of activity or so shows a handful of quakes, uh, you know, about three of them. Let me go to the all magnitudes and see what we have up here. Uh, there's a little cluster, a couple independent swarms out here, just south, east of Bangor, Maine, uh, Ellsworth down here. Now, this area does sit into a zone uh, where we do see potential hazard uh, fault systems. Now, they're not super active, uh, but there has been historical data out here that shows that this area does potentially see some uh, moderate, moderate earthquakes. Nothing like... Uh, down here around South Carolina or the New Madrid zone or the West Coast. But it is in a seismically active area. So to see these little earthquakes from time to time are not uncommon. All right, uh, let's see what else we have here for the space weather activity. Um, getting back to the boring side. I, you know, I can't really say boring because it is active, right? we got a lot of sunspots out here. But uh, they've been behaving. They have been uh, on their best behavior, not really producing any major flares while they are facing the Earth. Coincidence? I don't think so. I just find it rather odd. Either way, we've got some numerous sunspots out here. Uh, 3,200 3, here um, is... Yeah, it's hard to tell right now currently. Let me see the most recent image here. Looks like it may have a little bit of complex structure right here. Uh, but these other sunspots, this one kind of looks like it's getting its gears back up, uh, getting ready to maybe produce a flare. But it, again, it's almost out of Earth view. It's set here for days, looking massive and large, and then nothing. You know, this, this flare over here did produce some activity when it was way over on the southeastern side of the sun uh, quite a few days ago but when it came across here earth facing side it behaved uh, it behaved quite nicely so overall threat still looks like you know they're saying a 10 percent chance for an x flare i don't know if they've updated these or not uh 45 chance for an m flare 99 percent chance for a c flare maybe a little bit high because i just don't see any possibility of uh any X flare currently. Uh, we've been crackling with C flares a little bit. M flare there uh, to over 24 hours ago. A little bitty one, but that's about it. Uh, no major expected solar weather events coming. Therefore, the auroras uh, should be kept at a minimal, but occasionally we do get these little periods of interference or um, issues with the uh, BZ component. Let's see what we got going on here. There's a little break, it looks like, in the BZ component uh, pointing south, allowing some some of this density and speed to flow in. There's a little bit of uh, an elevated status here across that uh, space weather graph. I'm not for sure exactly where that's coming from. Uh, oh, let's see here. Good evening. This is from... Uh, I'm wondering if this is that uh, potential high-speed solar wind stream from that little bitty coronal hole uh, that we were uh, just kind of wondering if it would uh, reach us. Good possibility that uh, that that has arrived um, because it is now current image right here is way over here. So that's got to be it. Not a big event, but it is a little bump in the space weather status right now, allowing a little bit of unsettled conditions there at the higher latitudes and way down south in Antarctica area. 
But again, nothing major expected. No G1 class storm, nothing. All pretty quiet for now, folks. Alrighty, um, I got a super, super busy day. Today's my first uh, day of the spring semester. I'm taking four classes, 12 credits, and it's going to be a busy one. So I'm going to be swamped first week. They're really pushing it on us real quick. Uh, I'm not for sure why, but hey, that's all right. So, but I will be out here uh, monitoring earthquake activity and, of course, reporting back uh, on any major earthquake activity or solar weather events that do take place. Uh, but I will be uh, quite busy here getting uh, quite a bit of stuff done here with this new semester that is upon us here on this Monday. Take care, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on. Have a good one.